Rabbina, Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. We're continuing with our hadith class and we're uh, studying the hadiths from Riyadh Salahin, the righteous garden. And today we'll be moving on to the chapter which addresses, let me put it up here on the screen. Where is that? It should be on, there it is. Forgiveness of the ignorant. Uh-oh, very important chapter because unfortunately we are faced with people of ignorance every day in our lives. Let's look to see what Allah has to say about the ignorant. Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, show forgiveness, enjoy what is good, and turn away from the ignorant. And this is something that I try to stress all the time with myself and with others, the students here. When it comes to dealing with each other, we should be more forgiving. We talked about the dangers of holding a grudge. Oftentimes, Muslims will hold grudges against each other for petty, silly things because you don't like the way I look, or you got mad because I said something, you know, that you didn't like, or big, you just don't like me. So you want to hold a grudge. We're supposed to be forgiving of each other to not allow petty differences to come between us. And on the other hand, Allah teaches us to don't engage with people who are ignorant because ignorant people will cause you to hurt them, or they may end up hurting you. So Allah teaches us and reinforce to us in this beautiful verse of the Quran that when we're dealing with each other to show forgiveness, and when we're dealing with ignorant people to simply just turn away, don't debate, don't engage, just walk away from them. Very powerful verse of the Quran. And also, Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, so overlook their faults with gracious forgiveness. And here, Allah again is speaking about the believers. You know, none of us are perfect. There are some things about me that you may not like. You may not like my voice tone. You may not like the fact that I'm impatient. There are some things I may not like about you, but here Allah is saying, again, don't allow shaitan, your personal jinn, to cause you to end up developing a grudge against that person. Overlook their faults and instead see the good in each other. And the same when dealing with the ignorant people. We're all on different levels of closeness with the law. And we're all on different levels of understanding of this religion. Some of us are easier to understand things than others. When you're dealing with people who are less intelligent with you, it takes patience too. And you have to be forgiving of them too because they didn't know any better. Subhana Allah, she didn't know any better. So just let it go. Subhana Allah, he didn't know any better. So just let it go. Just turn away. Don't engage. Turn away. Don't argue. Just turn away from those who are ignorant because they just don't know any better. Subhana Allah. Good advice that our Lord is giving us. And also Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, let them forgive and pardon do you not love for a law to forgive you? And those who pardon men, verily Allah loves the good doers. Again, it takes patience to deal with people who are not as educated as you, people who don't know better. So again, don't sit around holding petty grudges, be forgiving. And again, Allah says, and the interpretation of meaning, whoever shows patience and forgives, this will true, they will truly be among the people who are doing things that are righteous. And again, we're talking about little petty things. I'm not talking about somebody killed your son. 
I'm not talking about somebody raped your daughter. I'm not talking about somebody broke in your house and stole your property. I'm not talking about somebody slandered your character. We're talking about the petty things. We need to let go, forgive each other for the petty things, things that, that impact your life, your honor, your property. You don't have to forgive people for those things. You can seek kisas, or you can ask for that type of forgiveness on a day of judgment. But for the petty things in life, you know, let it go. And that's what Allah is speaking about here. And let's not have to emphasize that because there's a lot of Muslims that think we supposed to be like Christians. You kill my son, I'll turn the other cheek. You rape my daughter, I'll turn, no, uh-uh, no. Those type of crimes, no, 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 no. Life, honor, and property. Remember guys, when it comes to a person's life, Honor, property, those things are sacred. But this other little petty stuff, you didn't like the way I answered a question or, you know, she raised her voice at me, you know, that type of stuff, let it go. Now let's look at this first hadith here. The prophet was asked by Aisha, his wife, I'm feeling the effects of those cookies. See, I told you I can't eat sugar. Now here it is. I hope I can get through this class without getting sick. Aisha said she asked the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, have you ever experienced a day that was harder or worse than the day of the Battle of Uhud? <laughs> Excuse me, hope I don't get sick. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes, I did. He said, I experienced the dangers at the hands of your people, the unbelievers from amongst the Quraysh. He said, and the worst treatment I ever received from them was on the day of Aqaba, when I went to Ibn Abdul Yalil, Ibn Abdul Kulayl, who was the chief or the leader of the people of Taif. I went to him with the purpose of inviting him to Islam, but he did not respond. So I left with deep distress and I did not recover until I arrived at Karn Thaab. And there I raised my head and saw a cloud which had cast its shadow over me. And I saw in that cloud the angel Jibril who called out to me and said, indeed, Allah has heard what your people said to you and the response they gave to you. And he has sent you the angel in charge of the mountains for you to command him to do whatever you want. And then the angel of the mountains greeted me and said, oh, Muhammad, Allah listened to what your people had said to you. And I am the angel of the mountains and my Lord has sent me to you so that you can give me your orders and I will carry them out. If you wish, I will bring together the two mountains that stand opposite each other and I will crush the people with them. This happened guys, when the prophet went to call the people of Taif to Islam. But instead of their leader meeting with him, he sent the dogs and the children to run him out of town. They threw rocks at him and the dogs ran after him, running him out of town. So here Allah sent the angel of the mountains to destroy them if he wanted. But the prophet said, no, don't destroy them. Instead, I hope that Allah will raise from amongst their descendants, people who will worship Allah and will not associate partners to him. And this is a wonderful, wonderful hadith because here the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that one of the most stressful times of his life was when these people ran him out of town. Here was his chance to get his revenge but remember the prophet Muhammad never sought revenge for himself. He only sought revenge if Allah's rights were violated. But still Allah sent this angel to destroy these people 
for the horrible things they said to him, which caused him so much anxiety. He had his chance to get his revenge, but instead he said, no, I just pray that their descendants will become Muslim. And sure enough, their descendants did become Muslim. So that shows how merciful and good our prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was and also how our prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a human being with feelings and emotions just like us. He was a human being that suffered from worry, stress and anxiety just like us, Subhana Allah. The difference is he didn't allow his anxiety. He didn't allow his depression or any of, or his worry to get the better of him. And the next hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, well, uh, the Aisha, the wife of the Prophet said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never hit anything with his hand, not a slave nor a woman but he did fight in the way of Allah. He never took revenge upon anyone for doing wrong to him either, but he would take revenge for the sake of Allah whenever the laws of Allah were violated. Again, the same thing that I just explained. A lot of us take things personal. We take things too personal. Our love is personal. Our hatred is personal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, until you love to, until you learn to love for the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah, you will never be a true believer. Well, what's the difference? Loving for the sake of Allah means that you love the things that Allah loves. Hating for the sake of Allah means you only hate the things that Allah hates. It's nothing personal. When we take things personally, that's not for the sake of Allah. Does everybody understand that? When we hate someone because of a personal reason, I don't like him because of what he did to my son. That's personal. I don't like that sister over there because I can't, I'm not going to ever forget the day she told me blah, 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 blah. That's personal. That's a grudge. As Muslims, we have to learn to overcome that personal crap. If something bothers you so bad, approach the person with it. If you don't like the way a person is speaking to your child, go to that person and say, excuse me, brother. Excuse me, sister, the way you're speaking to my son is inappropriate. Deal with it. And then once you address it, move on. But to sit around 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, and that child is now an old man. And if you mention that person's not the person that you had this discourse with name to this day, you say, I don't like him. Cause he yelled at my son. How old was your son? 10. How old is your son now? 50. Did you approach the man when it happened? Yeah. So what are you still holding a grudge for? That's personal. Do you guys get it? We have to let go of all that personal baggage. Learn to make our emotions be for the sake of Allah. If something happens, I'm not saying that you don't check people. If someone does something wrong to you or one of yours, check them when it happens. But once you check them, that's it. You don't come back 20 years from now saying, I hate that person. Because when I, my son was two, he smacked his hand. That's personal. To love for and hate for the sake of Allah means that I love that, that, I hate that person because that person did something that violated Allah. I hate the fact that that person worships something other than Allah. I hate the fact that that person is fornicating. I hate the fact that person lies. That's for the sake of Allah. But because somebody did something to your son when he was two, 
and it was already addressed on top of it, you still hating? You got issues. That's called carrying a grudge. And remember, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, any Muslim that dies harboring a grudge for another Muslim will never, ever, ever enter paradise. So that hatred that's so personal to you is going to prevent you from ever going to paradise. SubhanAllah. So again, guys, this is how our prophet was. You know, he never sought revenge for himself. He never held grudges against the people. He only sought revenge when the, 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 when the tenets of Allah or the tenets of Islam were violated, but never for himself. This is something that we need to work on bettering ourselves with as well. Also, another companion says, I was walking with the prophet one day and he was wearing a cloak that had a very thick border when a Bedouin happened to meet him. And the Bedouin grabbed the prophet by the side of his cloak and drew him in violently. It was so violent that the prophet's neck was bruised. And when the Bedouin grabbed him by the collar, he said, oh, Muhammad, give me some of the money that Allah has given you. So, but so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa turned to the man and smiled and then ordered somebody to give him some of the zakat. Again, this shows how our prophet was a patient man. Now, when that Bedouin came to him, it wasn't like he was trying to kill him. The Bedouins didn't have, and many still don't have, good manners. The prophet says, I was sent to teach you good manners. Back in, in those days, they didn't have the manners. So a person would come and grab you and say, hey, ain't you supposed to give me something? Hey, ain't you supposed to do this? Hey, shouldn't you have done that? They just didn't know any better. It's not that the man meant to hurt the prophet. He wanted some zakat but he didn't know how to ask for it. So that's why instead of the prophet pushing him and saying, get off of me, the prophet smiled and the man released him. And he said, yes, I will give you some of the zakat. And he said, Umar, give him some zakat. You know, the prophet was sent to teach us good manners. And when that happened, the companion said, oh prophet, do you want me to take his head off what he did to you? No. That's when the prophet said he didn't mean any harm. It's just that he doesn't know how to ask. It's our job as Muslims to teach one another the proper way to ask for things, the proper way to approach things. And that's what the prophet did. And by the way, after the prophet gave that man the zakat, as the companions were talking, about why shouldn't they kill him for what he did? That man came smiling to the prophet and said, hey, Muhammad, I declare that there is no God but Allah and you are his messenger. See, from that small act, that small act of patience, that Bedouin converted to Islam. And when he converted to Islam, the prophet looked at Umar and him and said, see, and you guys wanted me to take off his head. He just didn't know. He didn't know good man. He doesn't have good manners. It's my job to teach you all, all of you, good manners. And that man converted right there. SubhanAllah. Beautiful. I love the prophet so much. We all can surely learn from him. Patience. Also in the next hadith, Ibn Masood said, I can see the prophet look like one of the prophets of Allah. Wait a minute, I can see him. Oh, I mean, this is bad English. Let me read it first so I can give you the better English. Oh, he's talking about how he remembered the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling them about how Another one of the prophets that Allah sent was beaten so badly by the people, but he still kept praying for them. 
and he was talking about how on the on uh, the one of the day of one of the battles, even though the prophet was fighting against uh, his enemies, the Quraysh, he still made dua as he wiped the blood from his face saying, oh Allah, forgive my people because they don't know better. And of course he was talking about Jesus, alayhi salam. The prophet was speaking about how Jesus, despite all the trauma, all the turmoil that the people subjected Jesus through, he still made dua asking a lot to forgive the people because they just were ignorant and didn't know any better. Well, our prophet Muhammad was the same way. This happened during, I think it was the battle of the ditch. This is when the, the battle went on so long that they ended up missing uh, the Asr prayer. And so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the battle ended, he said, these people made me for us even forget to pray the Asr prayer. And so he, they prayed the prayer and he said, he told them a story of about how another prophet, you know, asked Allah to forgive his people because they didn't know what they were doing. And the prophet made do it too, saying the same thing. Oh, Allah, these Quraysh are so ignorant. They don't even know what they're doing. Oh, Allah, forgive them. They're just too ignorant to know what they're doing. So again, again, basically turn away from ignorant people. Don't allow the ignorant people, you know, to pull you down. Make excuses that of their ignorance and just move on. And then the last hadith here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the strong man is not the one who is able to wrestle you down to the ground. Instead, the strong man is the one who is able to control himself when he is angry. And this is so true. When we're dealing with ignorant people, ignorant people, they will push us and push us, but we have to remain firm and not allow our anger to cause us to stoop to their level because then the ignorant one is you. You should have known better. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, never argue the religion, because if you're arguing with a wise man, you're gonna make him hate you. And if you're arguing with an ignorant man, he may hurt you. So we have to learn when we're dealing with ignorant people to not allow them to push us to the point where we become angry and lose it because then the laugh will be on us. If you're laying in your grave because that person killed you, you, you fell for it. Or if you end up saying something out your mouth that you shouldn't have said, hey, it's on you. You were supposed to know better. So again, these are wonderful, wonderful hadiths from our prophet teaching us how to behave, how to carry ourselves, how to deal with, with ourselves when we're dealing with ignorant people. Because not everyone is on the same level as us in intelligence, faith, or anything, or any of that. And you're gonna come upon a lot of ignorant people. We have to have patience with them, okay? And also we learn, don't hold grudges petty grudges. Now it's different. If somebody harms your honor, your life, your property, that's different. But for the other little trivial things in life, let it go. Let it go. And we have to learn to love for the sake of Allah and only hate for the sake of Allah too. Until we master that concept, we'll never be true believers. On that note, we'll stop right here for today. If you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, you can type them on the screen. Also to remind everyone, we're looking for topics for the forum on Sunday. If there is something that you would like for me and Dr. Jamali and Sheikh Morsi to talk about or address, please send an email to Layla at soonafollowers.net.
you know, uh, or type it here in Zoom to me, join us in the Zoom room, give me your topic or whatnot so we can try to add it and see what we can come up with for uh, the Sunday form. And also let me remind everybody that this Saturday will be the annual, uh, I mean, the first Asuna Followers Masquerade Ball. It'll be held here in the Zoom room. All you have to do is bring a mask, put a mask on, and we'll give out first, second, and third place prizes to the best mask. You know, men can participate as well as the children. Okay, uh, that'll be this Saturday at 9.15 Eastern Standard Time, okay? So I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna close it up on Facebook. For those of you listening on Facebook, please share me to your Facebook timeline. And then after sharing me, please join us in the Zoom room because we're still live on Zoom, okay? Supanakala huma wa bihamdika asharon la ila haila anta astakfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Okay, any questions? I got sick from them cookies. I don't know how I did that lecture because I've been wanting to throw up. Y'all don't know how I've been fighting that. Lord have a mercy. I can never do that again before I talk. Whew, I held it down. Law held it. Any questions? Uh, Sister Arij, um, the Tawhi class is at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the Hadith class is at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every day. Every day. Oh, God, I feel sick. It's that cookie. Three cookies. That's all I could eat. But God, it made me sick. Yeah, any questions? <laughs>